All of that is to say that each of us carries labels. Let me tell you flat out, openly, what I want you to feel when you leave this room today. I want you to feel proud of your labels as members of this company, as members of the financial community, and as advisors to your clients. I want you to be proud of your labels. And I define pride in a way that I hope touches you. I define pride as personal responsibility for individual daily effort. You can have American Express folks up here all the time talking about all the new incentive programs and how, you know, how you're going to move forward and all the things that are going to happen. But the reality is if you don't have the sense of pride in what you do, nothing will happen. If you don't take personal responsibility for individual daily effort, nothing will happen. And didn't Mr. Jang's story sum that up? It's necessary to feel those things. But pride in your label doesn't come easy. And in the course of following the river of dreams, you need to be able to be willing to grow from adversity. In my case, I didn't even know I was blind until I was about nine years old. I'd heard the word, but it wasn't something I thought of very much. Down the street from the house, there was a baseball field, folks. And every day I could hear the sound of the game, the sound of the bat hitting the ball, and the ball popping into people's gloves, and I desperately wanted to be part of the game. But my parents had built a fence around my backyard. The idea was to keep me inside the fence and keep the world outside the fence. That's what we do with anybody we view as different, don't we? We isolate them. We categorize them. We file them. And so I was in the backyard, and I could hear the sound of the game coming from the Little League field down the street, the sound of the bat hitting the ball and the ball popping into people's gloves as they played, and I desperately wanted to be part of it. So I picked up a, 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 a rock from the ground, and I had an old Louisville Slugger baseball bat that my father had given me. And as the little boy would hit his baseball with his bat, I would hit my rock with, the, with, with, with my bat. So I'd be listening to the kids hit it, and then I'd throw the rock up in the air and try to hit it, and I had the Red Sox on the radio, and that was my world. Well, a little boy who'd been in the baseball game was on his way home, and he came by my fenced-in yard. And sadly, children can be cruel. The little boy came by the yard, and he looked through the wire fence, and he said, What's the matter, kid? Are you blind? And then he started the chant that I'll never forget. Blindy, blindy, blindy. Blindy, blindy, blindy. I picked up rocks and threw them at him. It's the only time in my life I ever hated someone. I threw the rocks at him and tried to hit him, and he just kept moving out of the way and continuing the chant until he got fed up with the game. But what happened to me in that moment is the second piece that you need to remember in your pursuit down the river of dreams, in your search to reach the sea of tranquility, okay? You're headed down a convoluted river of dreams in the hope of reaching the sea of tranquility, and that tranquility is security for your families. It's security for your clients. And you're headed down that river. But the little boy put an obstacle up in my way. He called me blindy. And what happened to me in that moment is exactly what I want to see happen to this group. I became competitively angry. I wanted to win. 